The other night I had a dream It was a world full of kings and queens But it was cold, dark as the night we I love being in the fire. atmosphere with so many different anointings and different giftings I'll let you guys settle down a little bit so that you can be good listeners Hey Todd I want to shift a little bit this morning and kind of bring kind of like a Bible school feeling, kind of a, kind of a training environment for a moment. Because oftentimes, if you know my history and my background, it doesn't matter all that much, but I was six months old in the Lord and Todd Bentley called me out by a word of knowledge and I traveled all over the world seeing signs, wonders, and miracles. Six months old in the Lord, my understanding of Christianity was that Jesus saved the lost, healed the sick, delivered demons, the message of the kingdom. That was normal Christianity to me. And being that that was normal Christianity to me and traveling all over the place, and then I started to, God put me, it wasn't the wilderness, but the local church. Now, and I started to realize that What's going on? You know, which one is normal Christianity? So there was a season of my life and ministry where I'll tell you how it happened. I gave a word to to Sean Bowles. I was in a meeting in England with him. I prophesied a word. I said, Sean, I see this map and there's this little bleep, 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 bleep. And it went off the map. And I said, God's going to raise you up to be like a Tim Story who was a pastor to Hollywood, I said, as a pastor in Hollywood to the artists and all this stuff. And I, I you know, I, I didn't know. Well, what I didn't realize was I prophesied a word about God taking Sean off the map and he was taking me off the map. And during that season, invitations didn't come very much. It was more local work. And I began to really begin to search the scriptures about what do I actually believe? Because I know what this person believes and that person believes. And if you've done lots of conferences, one message will contradict another message or contradict another message. And people get like, but I feel right now like the teaching anointing is on me. Because I do not want us to leave here going, Nolan is awesome. (laughs) Todd is like, if I could just, he's a, he is a, (laughs) Nolan is awesome. Now, you guys got to understand here, this is an MMA fighter. This guy's black belt or jiu-jitsu or MMA or something. These guys are fighters. They've gone at it. And, and there's a little competition that goes on just a bit. And, and they, they literally got a bit more aggressive than they probably should. But anyways, that's what's going on here. So, I'm going to tell you that story in a minute. Nolan is awesome. Christy is awesome. Todd is awesome. Jess is awesome. Brent's awesome. But hear my heart. These guys are sent from God to release. Sharon's more awesome than everybody. (laughs) Man, I'm going to sit down before I get beat up by all these guys. Art, Heather, you understand what I'm saying. But what often happens is when we come into a place or region and we see these dynamic, notable, remarkable miracles... Then we go, that man is so amazing. That is the opposite of what's supposed to happen. That's not what's supposed to happen. When you bring in guys like Todd, and you have to understand that they don't just come because they need another meeting. They're coming because, listen, in the spirit realm, if you were to see when Brant stands up here, you would actually see an invisible shopping cart filled with gifts. When Nolan stands up here, he can be talking about anything recipes for how to make his famous barbecue sauce. But in the spirit, he's carrying something because the fivefold are gifts to the body of Christ. So what I want to encourage you is to learn how to access the anointing that's being released in the room and say, not like, wow, they're amazing. Yeah, but God, I want to walk in that myself. That's the purpose. There's a radical shift that has to happen in the body of Christ to where the Ephesians four ministers are equipping the saints to do the work of the ministry. So I'm going to tell you a quick story, then I'm going to get to my message. Uh, no, no, I don't know. I'll tell you the short version. I'll tell my version. Let's just say, knock Nolan out. I had to help him up. No. 
Noel and I were, were sparring after I hosted him for a youth conference. I felt like God spoke to me uh, at a church I was a part of to relaunch this uh, youth movement called Holy Smoke, which actually Nolan was a catalyst for. And I, I, I uh, told Denny Klein, I said, I feel like I'm supposed to awaken Holy Smoke again, and I'm supposed to bring back Nolan. Denny cries, it's God, this is amazing. Nolan comes. And uh, so Nolan was doing MMA, and at the time I was doing more martial arts stuff. And so we were working out together. And uh, let's just say that night I went to the meeting with a fat lip and a black eye. <laughs> but Jesus still loves me, and uh, Nolan loves me more now. It was awesome. It, it was my fault. I got a little out of hand. <laughs> I, I, you don't kick the MMA fighter in the neck. Anyway. Jeez. It was awesome. Yesterday, as, as Brent was standing up here, I want to read a passage of scripture to you out of 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 24. But if all prophesy and an unbeliever or an ungifted man enters, he's convicted by all, he is called to account by all, the secrets of his heart are disclosed, and so he will fall on his face and worship God, declaring that God is certainly among you. As Brent was ministering in the word of knowledge, it wasn't so we can go, that's so amazing. It's so we can say, God knows me. And he knows my family. And he knows all the secrets of my life. I am loved by God. And the church has to come to a place of maturity where we stop elevating the man and the woman of God. We continue to honor, but we realize that that is a sign and a wonder. God is speaking to me. This is critical. Last night, I know Todd. I know Todd really well. When he's bringing, he's not just a speaker. That's the thing I'm trying to, uh, let me teach for a little, just a little bit. He's not just a speaker, a motivational speaker. He's bringing a word for a region. And I've traveled with him and I've seen what happens when he brings those type of words. Regions change. Things actually happen when the word of the Lord comes forth from the gift of faith. I, I was a part of this one church. I'll never forget. It was in Beulah, North Dakota. I'm not going to say the guy's name. but um, And what, what happened was they had a, a, a series of meetings and Todd was coming out and I was there. And the healing gift was operating. And everybody loved the healing gift. There actually was churches that were coming together that, you know, different denominations around the healing gift. Then one night... The joy of the Lord was released. And people were getting slain in the spirit. And this guy had fasted for 40 days and contended for revival. And here it was happening. I mean, God's spirit was moving in power. But the guy hadn't experienced this. So he was trying to catch every single person that fell. On his own. Because he didn't have a ministry team. He never trained people in this. He thought Pentecostal revival glory. I don't know what he thought. But it wasn't what was happening. He wasn't prepared for what God chose to do. So he's trying to catch people and he's sweating and he's running and I'm laughing. And I'm like, oh God, help this guy. He's going to have a heart attack. All of a sudden I hear, that's weird. I don't care who you are. And I look over. You're not going to believe who it was. The pastor's wife. He looks over at his wife, his eyes, I'm watching the whole thing. His eyes get huge, he grabs his wife, he goes home, they freak out. And, and that night, we were going to go back over his home, and they would have this beautiful debriefing meeting with us with best fresh baked cookies, and, and you got you to gotta get the picture, like, and it's, they're sweet, if I sound like I'm being mean, I'm not. Well, anyway, she, she'd get up and say, now we're going to take the morning offering, and I'm going to sing an offertarium. Hallelujah for the offering. That was the culture, right? Big hair, TBN, blue makeup. <laughs> and the hair's messed up. <laughs> falling and flopping. So, 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 so we go back to the house, and the, and the lights are off. And so Todd's like, dude, go knock on the door. So, oh, I got to do it. I'm the young intern. I knock on the door. The guy comes out in an undershirt. He's like, oh, I forgot you guys were coming over. Come on in. And he goes and grabs a bag of like trail mix and pours them in a bowl and it spills all over the table. He's like, oh. And then he sits down and he's, and then <laughs> I knew we were in trouble. And Todd says, where's, where's your wife? He says, 
I had to put her to bed. And the guy said, I've longed and contended for revival, but I don't like what it looks like. Remember that? He didn't like what it looks like. So oftentimes we go about as if we understand what's happening. And my concern is that what we don't want to see is just, who did you come to see? What did you come to see? A man burning in the wilderness? No, God's wanting to shift a culture. He's wanting to shift a region. Last night you were hearing promises. It wasn't just so we can get excited. It's so that you can apply them to your life and bring transformation to your city, to your home, and to your family. This is critical. It's so important. I... I I went from traveling itinerant ministry to doing training schools to pastoring. And I watched how oftentimes our ears want to be tickled. We just knock me down, pick me up, make me laugh. He, he, he. But are we going to apply and actually begin to walk out the promises of God? All right. So here's what I want us to do. In James chapter 5 verse 13. I'm going to read some scripture to you this, uh, this afternoon. James 5 13. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. If anyone among you is sick, let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. Verse 15. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they'll be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Now look at verse 17. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. So we look at this passage of Scripture, and it talks about Elijah being a man just like us. But the prayer of a righteous man, it availeth much. And we see Elijah praying... And it's just the cloud the size of a man's hand. It's not the complete outbreak of revival. It's not the full manifestation of your healing miracle. It's not the full release of your financial blessing. It's just the cloud. And Elijah is rejoicing, if I could just ad lib, because he knows it's coming. But I started to think about it. What happens before the cloud the size of the man's hand? Then what do you do? So I researched that story again. Now I want you to see 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse uh, 1. Now it happened after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, Go show yourself to Ahab and I will send rain on the face of the earth. So Elijah went to show himself to Ahab. Now the famine was severe in Samaria. Elisha had the word of the Lord, Elijah, sorry, had the word of the Lord before he ever saw the partial fulfillment of the promise. And then he got the word of the Lord, and then he did something about the word of the Lord. He believed it, and he went to the king and prophesied the word. Then he went and travailed like a birthing position in prayer, and then he saw the cloud the size of a man's hand. And I want to encourage you that maybe you're not seeing this cloud the size of a man's hand, especially if you've been contending for revival, contending for breakthrough in your region. What's the word that God is speaking to you? What are the promises that God has put within your heart? We need to allow the word of the Lord to shift our perspective. This is critical. I travel a lot. And um, what, what happened to me in my ministry, which was really interesting, was that God actually took me out of a lot of the, uh, our stream. And I started ministering in the very evangelical churches. And ministering in places that they never actually experienced moves of God's spirit. And then I would just get up and be a nice boy and just preach the word. And then people started getting healed and people get slain in the spirit. And that was amazing. But then I had to actually learn some theology. (laughs) Right? I I know we say, well, you don't want no theology. I just want the holy goat. Come on, come on, come on, come on. They were perceived to be uneducated and unlearned men. But they'd been with Jesus. We have no excuse to be uneducated men. We have the Bible on audio. You have the Bible on your phone. I mean, come, we do need to become a people that are diligent with the Word of God that can rightly divide the Word of truth. It's critical. So I started to search the Scriptures and get understanding, but not just that, when these manifestations would happen, because I would be just like me where I am right now. And I'd say, hey, can I pray for you? Boom! And they'd fall. And then they're going, that's weird. That's demo- and, that's, and I always had the same Scripture reference. We walk by faith and not by sight. Now listen, we walk by faith. We don't walk by spiritual, I mean, natural sight. Like, let me just give you an example. And forgive me, I received correction from the, from the leadership team here. But if, if the prophets 
sound just like C- CNN. They're not prophesying. I don't know what your news stations are, BBB or BCC, but if they're prophesying and they sound exactly like CNN, the Bible says you prophesy in proportion to your faith. It doesn't require faith for me to say, it's getting dark out there. That's not prophetic. Even in the patent Bible, when it talks about Agabus declaring the famine in the land, the church was moved to action and they actually took up food and supplies and sent them. The word of the Lord, even the warning, should cause us to respond, not fear. What realm are we operating from? Fear or the kingdom, which is perfect love, casts out fear. Not that there's not warning, not that there's not correction. But how, what do we do with the words that we're given? It's critical. We walk by faith and not by sight. But then I began to search the scripture. Let Let me just show you this passage of scripture. 2 Corinthians 4.13 But having the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus, and he will present us with you. For all things are yours, all things are for your sake, so that the grace which is spreading for more and more people may cause us to giving thanks to abound the glory of the Lord. I like to give a little context before I just take a scripture and throw it out there. You ever hear somebody preaching and they say, oh, your heart is wicked and deceitful above all things. He said, that's wonderful. That fit context in captivity in Babylon, which was going on. Because the Bible has a context. You can call stuff out and make it fit in a message, but that doesn't mean it's accurate. I just, I just want to encourage you, especially me coming from that realm of where my eyes were open. I started to have prophetic experiences. I had no understanding. And God began to say, Ivan, you're dangerous. You're dangerous because you can prophesy and you can see these things, but you don't have an understanding of your word and you could be easily deceived. That was the Lord speaking to me. Because I didn't understand the scripture. So if the angel moron comes and he tries to tell me, you know? Moroni. Anyway. Therefore, this is look at verse 17. For momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Faith, I walk by faith and not by sight, but faith sees. Listen, faith sees. Elijah saw. He had the word of the Lord in his heart before anybody else could see the manifestation. Last night you were given a word about what God is doing in this place. The prophet saw what was happening. Are you prepared for it? Are you beginning to shift your finances and get out of debt? Are you beginning to align yourself and position yourself? Are you beginning to allow the spirit of God to come and refine you with fire and say, God, I want to set myself apart so I can be a part of this move of the spirit. Or are we just going to go home and watch favorite Netflix show? Does the word of the Lord cause your life to shift? Do you believe the word of the Lord? Even if it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Last night I left here and I was disturbed. And if, and, and if you get to know me, sometimes I don't even know why I feel what I feel. And I said, oh my gosh, something's about to happen. But the people are not ready. I know Todd's ministry. I have seen the Lord on him come and blow up regions. Now, I'm not trying to flatter anybody, okay? Hear me. But I know Nolan's ministry. These guys have been walking in revival, outpouring for years. It's not just an event just to have a good hoorah. There's something happening here where God is speaking over region, transformation. There's a needs to be preparation on the side of the people. And you may not see it, but you heard the promise. Faith has to see. I want to establish something really quickly. I want you to turn there with me. Luke 8, 49. Hope you have your Bibles, your phones, your something. If you came to church without your Bible, I should beat you with mine. (laughs) Nowadays, we didn't bring our Bibles. These people don't teach. You need apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And the Bible says this. First apostle... Second prophet, third teacher. Where's the prophet? In the middle between the apostle and the teacher. (laughs) Because the apostle is the objective word of God. The teacher is the objective word of God. 
The prophet is the subjective word of God. What is God is saying in this hour? Hello? I'll give you an example really quickly while you're turning there. There was an amazing man of God and he brought a correction to movement. Seek his face and not his hand. Seek his face. And now we have bumper stickers, t-shirts. Seek his face, not his hand. Hey, uh, Heather, I want you to come over to my house. I want your face to come but not your body. Leave your hands at home. He who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. When I get God to my house, I get all of God. And if you're seeking his hand, look up. So what happened was a prophet was bringing correction to a move of God and then people made that the word but they didn't understand the short word of prophecy. This is critical. If not, you're jumping from this is the year of this, the year of that, the year of this. It's always the year of faithfulness. It's always the year of consistency and character and love. Are you hearing me? I'm saying as you watch this team interact, it's so beautiful because we all complement one another so well. So in Luke chapter 8, 49, it says, While he was still speaking, a man from the house of the director of the synagogue came and said to Jairus, Your daughter is dead. Do not weary and trouble the teacher any further. Verse 50. But Jesus, on hearing this, answered him, Do not be seized with alarm or struck with fear. Simply believe in me as able to do this, and shall, she shall be made well. Reading out the Amplified. Verse 51. And when he came to the house, he permitted no one to enter with him except Peter, John, and James, and the girl's father and mother. All were weeping for and bewailing her, but he said, Do not weep, for she's not dead but sleeping. Jesus, either he's lying, which he can't do, or he sees something we don't. Awake, you sleeper. Rise from the dead, and Christ will give you life. I want to ask you a question when you're looking at your life right now. The promises of God. You're looking at this region. You're looking at your family, your marriage, your children. What are you seeing? Are you seeing? It's dead. It's I give up. I'm hopeless. I'm just going to abandon. I'm going to walk away from God. Or are you saying, God, show me your perspective in this situation. Because your perspective is very different. I don't see Jesus up there going, oh man. I didn't see this coming. We're in big trouble now. So what needs to happen, the body of Christ has to shift to Ephesians 2, where we're seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. And now when a situation arises, we don't get overcome with fear, which is the assignment of the enemy. I'm not prophesying this, but what would happen if, I'm from the States, so if every single major uh, epicenter, New York City, L.A., you know, Chicago, these different places, at one time were all bombed, what would happen to the church, to the nation? Imagine the fear that would come. See, it's going to require you and I to see from heaven's perspective in the season or we're going to become those doom and gloom people that are hiding. in their Jeremiah 29, they're in captivity in Babylon and God says, oh, sorry guys, you're in captivity, you're in trouble. No! He says, plant vineyards. Make, have families. Build houses. And pray for the land in which you're captive. That's a kingdom mentality. In the midst of all the things that are happening, the church is shining, shining her light, arising with greater glory, releasing the kingdom, doing incredible things. In the midst of houses going in foreclosure and the economy crashing, the church is buying homes and and giving them to the widow. Come on. See, we need to begin to look with heaven's perspective of what's going on, not just get fearful and then begin to prophesy the fear. Todd prophesied a story over me yesterday, a passage of scripture yesterday, about the king and Elisha. I I, I get their names in her, forgive me. And about telling him to take the arrows and throw them. I preached that last Sunday. That that was amazing. These guys are um, the the hear voice of God. The prophet is going into the bedchambers and he's overhearing the secrets that are happening. I want you to hear something. Because he understood God's heart for Israel, he was able to warn the king and say, don't go there. They have an ambush set for you. But what happens when the prophetic community doesn't understand the nature and character of God, they don't understand the heart of God, they will hear the assignment of the enemy and then they'll begin to prophesy it. You can hear 
But when you hear something, Father, what is your heart? What are you going to do? The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Jesus is the savior. He's the redeemer. He's the restorer of all things. If I bring a word and there's no nature and character of Christ in it, then it's probably not of Christ. It's critical. Even in the midst of correction, there's hope, there's life. There's, he is the father who disciplines the sons that he loves. All right. I want to look at a few more verses. Uh, Matthew 14 and 21. 14 through 21. Matthew 14, 14, 21. Why, when he went ashore and saw a great throng of people, he had compassion, pity, and deep sympathy for them and cured their sick. When evening came, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote and barren place. The day is now over. Send the throngs away into the villages to buy food for themselves. Verse 16. Jesus said, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. He said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to recline in the grass, and he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and blessed and broke the loaves, and handed pieces to the disciples, the disciples gave them to the people. And they all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the twelve baskets full of the broken pieces left over. I had a vision one time where I saw a little boy with a sack lunch. And the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, many in my church feel like that little boy with the sack lunch. We say, God... I want to serve you. I want, to, I, want to, I, want to, I want to flow with you. I want to obey you. But all I have, all I have is this little sack lunch. And God says, bring it to me. And I'll multiply it. What I've observed with pastoring is that everybody wants what somebody else has. I want your anointing. I want your house. I want your car. I want your outfit. I want Kevin's watch. I almost stole it. I almost stole this watch. I'm confessing right now. Ask my wife. She's like, give it to Kevin. I'm, like, I'm taking it. I'm kidding. Kevin and I are friends. But I will take his watch. <laughs> so instead of standing in the presence of God, getting equipped and anointed and released, we begin to get in the presence of God and look at our own insecurities and our own fears and our own inadequacies. And then we say, God, I can't speak very well. Moses, what's in your hand? Asking you a question this afternoon. What's in your hand? Well, Ivan, I'm not like you, man. I, I can spend hours reading. Like, I just love to read and study. It's just so fun for me. Well, that's not me. I'm not like that. And, or, or, or you see these guys operating in the anointing. and, how, and I can, That's not me. Oh, my. What's in your hand? Moses could have threw a wrench down. Moses could have threw a hammer down. He could have threw his daycare. He could have threw his voice. What is in your hand? Let God multiply it. We've created a culture that has elevated the man on the platform, all not understanding that this man is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. And if every person is operating into the church, we're not saving the lost. Let me give you an example. Billy Graham. You ever see Billy Graham preach? Oh, Billy Graham, man, he would preach and he'd point and he'd touch his Bible and he would, and the masses of people would come. You go, well, I'm not an evangelist. I can't do that, right? And then old Benny, Benny Hinn. Sing it again, Charlie. You are great. You do miracles, so touch. So we watch this and we go, that's how I move in the healing anointing. So then my neighbor's sick. I knock on the door. With my worship guy. And he's got his piano. I say, dim the lights. But I don't come out yet because I hide in the back room. Until he touched, then I come out. And the sick person is going, what the heck is going on right now? I love and honor. I, that guy hands on my head right now. I mean, he's moved, but that's not the model for me. One of my favorite guys was a man by the name of A.A. Allen. A.A. Allen, I don't know if you know him, because he was like, a, like when he preached, he would do this. And I, I, he's like a fighter. And I watched him like, he's boxing. He'd be like, and the Lord has authority to cast out every devil. In the name of Jesus, he will heal the sick. And he would do that. Oh, and I, and I, oh, I, love, I still watch. He, he, 
some of what Todd does with the gift of faith. He would do this. He'd say, oh, there'd be a guy laying in a, in a, in a, in a, in a stretcher. And he'd be like, I mean, <laughs> I mean, he was dead, you know. And he'd go, bring that man up here to the front. I wouldn't want him. With my, I'd be like, put him in the back with the air conditioning on. You know, don't bring him up here. It's going to. No, he says, bring him in the front. And he says, sir, what's wrong with you? You're going to die, aren't you? This man is going to die. Maybe today, if he's not healed. But he's not talking to the guy. He's talking to the crowd, and he's releasing the gift of faith. Yeah. Yeah, come, listen. He's saying, how many of you believe Jesus can touch this man? Eh, I don't, not really. He looks dead. <laughs> but then as he begins to share, share testimony and establish faith, then the crowd is like, of course he is. So he's seeing from heaven's perspective. Then he goes, he goes, he goes, does this man have any nicer clothes? He's dragging this thing out. I would have been like, bless him. Move him out. <laughs> Todd will pick up somebody out of a wheelchair in their walk. I pick up, they fall. I'm like, oh, sorry. We all have a different anointing. I was in a meeting where there was a cripple. I, when Todd shares stories, sometimes people are like, yeah, right. I was there for like, a, not all, because, but a lot of this. I watched Todd. This kid is, you know, he was crippled. And he goes, huh? Eh? And grabs his leg and goes, bam, 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 bam. I'm not like that. I'm like cry when the presence of God comes on me. <laughs> and, and the kid gets up and walks. I watched it. So here, uh, A. Allen, he goes, do you have change of clothes, sir? And the man goes, yes. I brought, I brought my suit. He brought his suit. He brought his suit. This man. And, he's, and the crowd is just getting fed off of this. And he's like, when's the last time you've eaten? And he goes, oh, God. He goes go get him an egg sandwich. <laughs> this is not, you can watch this. Egg sandwich. I don't know if I'd eat an egg sandwich if I... Anyway, and he gets some milk. And he takes the man, he lays hand. Heal him, Jesus! The guy sits up, stands up. Oh my gosh, he was dead. His bowels were shutting down because of cancer. This is back in the 40s. And then he sits down, and he gets the, the milk and the egg sandwich, and the guy puts a straw in it. And he takes the straw and chugs it down. And he asks him, he says, could you have done this? He says, I've been eating intravenously. I can't hold anything. Down. He got completely healed. Yeah, come, on. Shh, come on, I love that. But if I'm up here and I'm like, what's wrong with you, woman? Oh, you mean you have what? You know, you'd be like, sit. How about Catherine Kuhlman? Have you been waiting for me? You'd say, no. No, I haven't been waiting for you, Ivan. You're weird. I all white dress. Never mind. That was, I took that one too far. I had a pastor friend, older gentleman, who said he went to one of her meetings when he was in college. And he said, it was the worst meeting I've ever attended. She rambled. Then all of a sudden, the whole atmosphere was electrified. And she said, he's here. <laughs> and he said, what the? People were coming out of wheelchairs. God's not looking for silver vessels. God's not looking for golden vessels. God's looking for yielded vessels. Catherine's died a long time ago. I remember the day Catherine died. Imagine if I talk like that. <laughs> my, 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 glory, glory, glory. I love T.D. Jimmy, some T.D. Jakes. Yeah. God's about to release his presence and revival. <laughs> we could do on and on and on, right? <laughs> I was going to do you, Nolan, but you're going to hurt me. He's going to hurt me. No. My point is, is that these men and women are operating out of their anointing, but also their personality. And so we, we watch them and we receive from them, but something happens. Instead of getting the impartation and operating on it, we try to be them. I, I, I'm not like that. I'm different. You're different. So my question is, instead of looking at your little loaves and fishes, 
what's in your hand and let God multiply it. How has God wired you? Begin to search God. This comes back to identity. All creation eagerly awaits for the sons of God to be revealed. Do you know who you are? It's critical. If we don't know who we are, then we're always looking for somebody else to tell us. I want to do one more verse here. Oh, this is a good one. 2 Kings 6.14, and then I'm going to end here and have the guys come up. 2 Kings 6.14. So the Syrian king sent their horses, chariots, and a great army. They came by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God rose early and went out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was around the city. Elisha's servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? Elisha answered, Fear not, for those with us are more than those with them. Then Elisha prayed, Lord, I pray you open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the young man's eyes and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around about Elisha. I love this story so much. I'll never forget, Todd was preaching in Alaska. And the Lord asked me to pray in the spirit and my eyes were open the first time. It was incredible when your eyes are open. This story has a specific passion for me. But I picture it like this. I picture Elisha sitting in a rocking chair. I'm not saying this, what it was. Just come with me for a moment. Here's Elisha. He's sitting in a rocking chair. And he's got a blanket over his legs. And he's drinking a cup of tea. That's him. And he's rocking in his chair. And armies surround around about his house. And he's going, you are great. You do miracles. Hey, move over. I'm trying to watch Jeopardy. Oh. <laughs> and the young guy is freaking out. He runs out, looks out the window, and he's going, do you see what's going on? He's going, oh, God, open his eyes that he might see. And he sees that the armies of God are more, there's more for them than those that are against them. Well, the thing that I want you to look at is the circumstance, the situation was still there. There was still an army around about him. The difference was he had heaven's perspective. And that's what God wants to do. I believe with everything inside of me, you can get born again, save, say the prayer, look in the mirror and go, I still look like the same guy. But it requires the eyes of faith and it requires renewing your mind by the washing of the water by the word. To be able to look at myself. I pray this Ephesians 1, 17 through 19 over you. That the eyes of your heart might be enlightened. That when you look at yourself in the mirror, it's mirror, mirror on the wall. I want to see Jesus and that's all. That you're not looking in the mirror. If it was me and you put a mirror here, I'd be like, whoo, whoo. <laughs> Come on. Stand in the mirror. I'm, the, I'm a new creation in Christ. Father, I thank you that your spirit lives within me. Romans 8, 11, the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. God, I thank you that I'm a partaker of your divine nature. There was a move of God that brought in understanding confession. And because of people's perspective of excess, but maybe can't put it that way, people swang the other way. The Bible says confess with your mouth Jesus is what? Lord, there's confession of lordship. I believe you need to confess, not so that God hears you, but so that you hear yourself. If I get a new believer and I get his scriptures in him, and I begin to teach him how to make declarations, I hear people pray and it makes me sad. God, bless me. Oh, bless me, God. Father, take out my wicked heart. Oh, God, I'm just struggling with the flesh. Oh, Lord. Have you ever gone in intercession and left? Sadder than when you went in? You weren't interceding. (laughs) Father, I thank you that I'm blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Father, I thank you that I've been given a new heart and a new spirit that causes me to obey. Father, I thank you that I have the mind of Christ. God, I thank you that your spirit rests upon me. And Lord, I'm asking you that you would teach me how to operate in this realm. Father, shift my perspective to heaven's perspective. So God, in this situation right now, I'm looking and, and, I, and we don't have the finances to take care of this, but God, you supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory. So instead of crying and complaining and writing letters and rah, 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 
What I'm going to do, God, is I'm going to close my eyes right now. I'm going to say, teach me how to access the treasury in heaven. Father, is there... Whoa, the word of wisdom just came. Oh, I'm supposed to give this ministry $2,000. Boom. I'm not freaking out. Or in that situation, the word of wisdom comes. Oh, I see what I'm supposed to do. It's a demonic spirit. I bind in Jesus' name. So you learn how to partner with God. This is critical. God wants to shift your perspective. Let's stand together. I want to pray with you. I want to release words over you that are going to hopefully shift the way you see yourself and your calling. I'm going to release it to the, to the big guns. And so, God, I just thank you. Our, I love when you get up there and you whistle and you do your thing. It takes me to the garden. It's like walking with Jesus in the cool of the garden. It's amazing. Just close your eyes for a moment. Father, I thank you so much that your bride is so beautiful. You know, there's so many people that criticize the church. Jesus takes that personal. Jesus, he says to Saul of Tarsus, he says, Saul, why persecutest thou me? That was King James, sorry. Is that, you say that in Canada? Why, why are you persecuting me, dog? No, that was too far, right, too. That was the message. That was the message. He identified himself with the church. His church is beautiful. You're his church. You're his bride. And Lord, I just thank you that your bride is victorious. She's an overcoming bride filled with the spirit without measure. God, I thank you that you're our Abba Father. And I thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up in judgment, we shall condemn. God, I thank you that you're a firewall before me and behind me in my rear guard, that you uplift me. I thank you that you're my father. You'll never leave me. You'll never forsake me. You're with me always, even under the end of the age. God, I just thank you even right now for a radical shift. Something God's been showing me a lot lately, and I'm picking it up a lot here today, is there many of you that are tired? There's a fatigue, but it has to do with anxiety and stress actually affecting your glands, your adrenal glands, your, there you go, your your metabolism. Some of you are struggling with weight, but it's not because of how much you're eating, it's actually this anxiety and stress affecting your hormone levels. And so, God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you right now for the release of anxiety. Come to me, all you who are heavy laden and burdened. I'll give you rest, and I mean it. I'm not lying. When you come to me, I'm not always going to give you a task. Sometimes your task is sit down. Cease from your striving and know that I'm God. Can you just be with me a little longer? But I got a world to change. I have a busy day today, said, I think it was Martin Luther. So I'm going to pray two more hours. Father, I pray that you would teach us how to practice your presence. Heaven's perspective. It's not about performance. It's about learning how to operate out of that place of rest. So Father, even right now I'm asking for your words to come forth. I pray you open our eyes to see. Put your hands over your eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that our eyes would be open to see from heaven's perspective first and foremost that we'd be able to see ourselves the way you see us Lord I just thank you I receive your love put your hand over your heart God we just ask right now I receive the love of God thank you that you love me it's easy to get busy in ministry and do and do and do I receive your love for me that you love me God that you love me God not if you think you have But is there anybody here that specifically has, that they know of, a medical condition of your glands? You do? Let's have a few of you come up here. What does the pituitary gland do? Oh, I didn't know that. Is there somebody that has something wrong with their their pituitary gland? Your thyroid? Huh? Thyroid? All thyroids? Oh my gosh. Adrenal gland. Adrenal glands? Okay. Let's just stretch forth our hands and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just speak peace and rest over your mind and over your heart. In Jesus' name. And we just call your bodies to come into alignment. 
And we just release healing in your glands. We just speak to your metabolism to be made whole. We speak to hormone levels to come into alignment. Father, in the name of Jesus, some of you have been feeling like, am I going crazy? You know, is it bipolar? But actually it's connected to your hormones. So Lord, I just thank you right now for touching hormones, for touching glands, God. We just ask that you would release the supernatural strength in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I just saw that. I didn't see the face of Jesus, but I saw something walk by you and put something in you. I just was watching it for a moment and you went, Ooh. So Lord, I just thank you for imparting something to her. God is doing something creative in your stomach womb area. So Lord, I just thank you for just a creative miracle. In Jesus' name, fire of God. Father, release your anointing. Touch, 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 touch. I just, I just prophesy joy over you and your household. I pray you would come into a season of grace. I'm going to share one more thing. Then I'm going to have the guys come and tag team for a minute. I, I had this experience with the Lord where I was sitting at a table with him, Psalms 23. And I was trying to look at the face of Jesus, but I couldn't. Because there was all this demonic coming on around me. And, and it was like, it couldn't touch me, but it would torment me. It was heckling me. It was speaking against me. And I would try to look at the face of Jesus. And, and I get scared. And I get this. And, and it was like, it took everything inside of me to lift up my gaze to look at the face of Jesus. It was exhausting. And when I did, and I looked at the face of Jesus and I caught his eyes, he was laughing so hard. You know when you know when you laugh so hard you make no noise? <laughs> that kind of laugh. I'm in an encounter. And Jesus is like <laughs> just and I have a story. My older brother and I were going to, to Disneyland, something like a great adventure, Six Flags, and my dad was driving the car and he was drinking a seven up. We don't know why to this day he went <laughs> and spit it all over the windshield. We laughed so hard that my brother started to throw up. It made it even more funny. <laughs> so he's like, <laughs> right? And cramps were fun. Jesus was laughing that hard. Wow. He laughs at the enemy. Yeah, yeah. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. If you gaze into the eyes of Jesus, you'll laugh with him. He prepares a table, the audacity. You guys are my enemies? Hey, I want a table right here. Let's just have a seat. And as long as you look into his eyes, that demonic, I didn't even notice it. I'd rather be glory conscious than devil conscious. Father, I'm asking you right now for release. We're going to minister to you. Let's all stand for a moment. I, I, I just, there's just this connection I, and I'm getting with, it's anxiety, it's depression. I feel what God wants the garment of praise. Judah shall go first. Oh, it's so hard. The warfare, the warfare. God fights differently than us. He sends the worshipers in. As the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. God, I ask you right now in Jesus' name. For the joy of the Lord. That's not just an emotion. It's actually the fruit of the spirit. Let it begin to bubble forth in our innermost being. Spring up, oh well. Just put your hands on your stomach. And just begin. You. Speak to the well inside of you. Spring up, O oh well. Why are you cast down in me, O oh my soul? Rise up and praise God. David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. I just ask right now, Father, give us the tools to strengthen ourselves in you. To walk in joy. When everything around us is opposite. Because we have your perspective. bring us into a place, maybe ours, where we can just lift our voices to God. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your presence. Let's get a little more high praise. A little more high praise. A little more high praise. 
Surrasara da Shiker, Dishekete Basura, Mama, Urasi Ketete Ropopo Sepata Isapa, Ishakore City Atabasi Teba, Ikerebo Shikaro Tobo Soko, Hiranananabo Sukura Baba Babaka, Ushikia Rama Mosi Ketete, Ishatata Patata, Ika Asigon, breaking the neck of mental illness and he's breaking the neck of depression I saw like an onslaught come into this valley of mental illness and depression God in the name of Jesus we just crush the head of the enemy in Jesus name we just rebuke all mental illness all depression Father we release joy and life in this region in the name of Jesus thank you God just lift your voices, saints. Lift up your heads, O oh, you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty in battle. He is the King of glory. Lift up your heads, saints. Make war with praise. War with praise. Breathe on my dreams. transition just a minute. I want to pray for you guys. It is my passion, not just to see people have a high and, but to learn to walk out spiritual truth in their life. I'm not home with you. You should take Todd's watering tree CD home with you because I soak to that all the time now, but there are tools that help us, but we have to learn how to pick up our sword and fight. There comes a place where the baby learns to eat and drink. And I feel like God's calling us to maturity, but I want to minister over them. I saw something last night. I whispered quietly into Brent's ear, but I feel like I need to establish it in the region. I saw a picture of these men and women of God, high caliber men and women of God. And they would walk into Brent's and Sharon's home and they would take their jacket and they would hang it on the coat rack. They weren't retiring their mantle. They were resting it there. I feel like God is establishing this house as a place of restoration. And there's there's ministers of high caliber that they can't go anywhere and be real or be themselves. But they'll come here and they won't retire. But they can rest their mantle. And I just thank you God for even an opportunity and opening a door. Even some type of a, a, a restoration center. Lord, I'm asking even for like a cabin or there's something of people coming here and getting strengthened and refreshed. And God, I thank you for a movement within a movement. I thank you for convergence, God. I see movements connecting with movements. I see streams connecting to streams and becoming one river, one river of God that makes the city glad. God, we just thank you for movements within movements that make the city glad. I just see these people, like some of the Argentinians and some of the Brazilians, and they're beginning to come here. And there's, I just see culture, culture. I call forth the Hispanic church in this place, in the name of Jesus. I call forth the diversity of worship, in the name of Jesus. I call forth the native brothers in this place, in the name of Jesus. God, I just thank you for a house for the nations. Son of man, what do you see? Some of you see a valley. Of dry bones. Prophesy to the dry bones. I see a mighty army. Come on, guys, prophesy to the dry bones. We speak over this region. We speak a mighty army. 
a Joel's army emerging like a phoenix among the ashes, rising up in authority and power, loving God and knowing God. We thank you, Father. Just take one one moment here. On three, I want us to to just shout Jesus. Uh, It's always interesting to me when I try to bring into people into high praise and then I feel heaviness. Huh? Because that's the spirit oftentimes that hinders them. Uh, Come on. So Father, in Jesus' name, awaken the warriors, arouse the army. On three, let's shout Jesus. Ready? One, two, three. Jesus! Let the lion roar. Is Jessa here? Jessa, do you have a word? You sure? I'm going to transition. Give these guys the mic. I'll stay and minister to some people as well. Brent, do you have something? Good. (laughs) Nolan? Todd? You got something? He's got something? Um, I just feel that was an excellent word. Thank you, uh, Ivan. I feel like the Lord wants to apply it. You know, we have to see our situations different. um, But sometimes first we have to actually see ourself different. And um, what God was speaking to me when Ivan was speaking, you know, God comes to Gideon in Judges and he says, Gideon's kind of hiding away, just surviving. You know, here feel like you're just barely surviving. Sometimes surviving battles, surviving warfare, because the enemy was ravaging the land, ravaging Gideon. So he just barely has enough, like they're just threshing out enough. And God comes to him and says, oh, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. And Gideon goes, he instantly objects. <laughs> He's like, if the Lord is with us, then why has all this bad stuff happened to us? Why is everything going wrong? And the Lord says, go in the strength you have. And he answers him again and he says, uh, Gideon still argue, has these arguments about how he views himself. Because first he, he didn't view the situation. He didn't believe God was really with him because look at all the bad stuff. And, and God kept saying to him, you're the answer. Go in the strength you have. You're the mighty man. And he's like, and then he goes, I'm not the mighty man. I'm actually the weakest. My family's all messed up. My whole clan is the weakest. You know, I come from a dysfunctional family. My whole history is dysfunctional. I've been defeated my whole life, and you're calling me a mighty man. And God had, Gideon would, by the way, if you read the rest of the story, he would change his situation. He would change his family. He brought down idols in his father's house. He would change the whole nation. He became a nation changer. But the first thing that had to change was how he thought about even himself and God being with him personally. And the Lord, you know, the word repent means to change. And we want to change nations. Hey, let's change this region. Let's change our families. Let's change our situation. But the first thing that's to change is how you see you. Because God wants to use you to bring change, but he's got to change how you see you. And um, there's this paradox, you know, that sometimes confuses. People divide things in scripture because they don't understand how opposites can lay down together. And, and, and we don't understand how I can be the weakest, but I'm the mighty one. Let the... Let the weak man say I'm strong. Let the poor man say I'm rich. Let the one who has no children call himself the father of many nations, Abraham. God sees different. And so you have to see yourself different. And that's why you'd often give people new names. He said, so you change the way you see yourself. And then you'll go on to change nations. So I, I want to uh, pray, pray for your, what you say about you. And I'll just tell you this last story. And I I'm, hope I'm going to get this right. I believe it was Michelangelo who would... Uh, not the, not, the, not, the, not the turtle, Michelangelo. Not the ninja turtle. <laughs> Michelangelo, yeah, the painter, sculptor. He sculpted his, these famous sculptors. He'd create out of marble, out of these chunks of thing. And they're so alive and they're so living. They'd ask him, how do you do that? How do you create that art? And he, would, he said, um, I see the horse inside of the marble. I see the man inside of the marble. And then he said, I remove everything that's not what I see. And what happens in New Covenant, it's not that we don't realize we have flesh and we have sins and we have stuff and God addresses those. But it's always from the place that he says, I see the mighty man in you. I see the new creation and I I want to strip off everything that's not that. I I see riches inside me and I'm going to throw away everything that's not that. He sculpts off the stuff that's not the true you. But he first calls you 
who he's making you. He says, Peter, you're a rock. So God wants to change your name, how you see yourself. So I want you to stand up and uh, you're going to go and you're going to go change situations. You'll change things in your family like Gideon. But you've got to believe what the Lord says about you. Because the Lord started with Gideon. Before I say anything to anyone else or to, before I tell you what to do, before I tell you to go change your family, before I tell you to go, ch- here's the key to change the nation. And God gave him keys. And before you even summon the army, and you'll summon an army, first change the whole way you think about you. And who, you know who's, who we're hardest on most of the time? Ourself. You know who we beat up the most? Ourself. How we think in here. We don't always speak it, but it's in here. So pray for your, your mind. Repentance means change your mind. Oh, there we go. Put your hand on your head. Change your mind. The Lord is with you. Go in the strength you have. Mighty man. Beautiful one. Righteous one. Saint. Nishkitata. Healer. Victor. Let the poor man say I'm rich. God didn't argue that Gideon was weak. He said, I called you mighty. He didn't argue that Abraham didn't have any kids. He said, I called you a father of nations. I call things to be not as though they are. God, what are you saying over me? You need to prophesy to you and you need to own your name. Show that, help us to see ourselves differently, to see the living creatures inside of us, to see the, the might inside of you. And go in the strength you have and it will go. Go in the revelation you have. Beauty. Beauty for ashes. Beauty. Beautiful one. See yourself healed. Do you see it? See yourself free. See it. You got to see it to be it. See it. It's going to start for you. He's going to show you situations and things in your family. But he said, not until you start with you, what I call you, what I name you. So you just receive that in Jesus' name.